Right. In this problem, we are trying to determine whether or not this uh, poor little monkey is going to be shot. Now, this is a classic physics example. I'm not the one who decided that monkeys should be shot here. I think there are many endangered species of monkeys, so, you know, just in general, uh, try not to shoot monkeys. However, it is a classic physics example, and we'll see a YouTube video a little bit later in class of a, of a, of a stuffed monkey getting shot. Uh, so it's a monkey for this problem. This is called the shoot the monkey problem. Now, if you have a hunter at the same height as a monkey, okay, and let's imagine the hunter shoots, the monkey, feeling clever, decides to drop from the branch at the moment that the bullet is shot. You can very easily convince yourself that the monkey will have made the wrong decision because you know that a bullet fired and a bullet dropped changed their Y position at the same rate because gravity is affecting their Y motion in the same way. So as the bullet gets shot, it will drop at the same rate as the monkey no matter how far away the monkey is, no matter how long the bullet is in the air, presuming that the bullet gets to the monkey before it hits the ground. In that case, the monkey will always be hit. But let's spice up the example for a little bit. What if instead you had a hunter down on the ground? The hunter is not aiming straight at the monkey, but is rather aiming up at an angle. What is that angle? Well, we can get that from our drawing here. I've shown you that the horizontal displacement, once again, creatively, is delta x. The height of the monkey, creatively, once again, h. So if we wanted to figure out what theta was in terms of our other variables, and that'll come in handy later, what we would see is that we could, uh, we could make a triangle, this triangle right here, where you have sides h, delta x, and uh, this hypotenuse right here. If you wanted to put this angle in terms of other variables, what you're going to see then is that tangent of theta should be equal to opposite over adjacent, in this case, h over delta x, leaving theta to be the inverse tangent of h over delta x. Remember that for later, it will come in handy. What we want to know then is Will the bullet drop in such a way off of its straight line path to where it hits the monkey? What we really wish to figure out is, is h equal to the change in y position of the bullet minus the change in y position of the monkey? This will take yourself a second to convince yourself of. But note that the change in y position of the monkey will be negative. So if we subtract a negative, this will become a positive. So we're saying if we add up however high the bullet goes up, plus the distance that the monkey will have dropped, does that equal h? This is what we're trying to figure out. If this is true, the monkey gets hit. Okay. So let's think about what these uh, change in positions would be. We know that change in position is equal to 1 half a t squared plus v naught t, where the a and the v over here are the a and the v in the y direction. So let's plug that in for the bullet and the monkey. Is height equal to these two things? Well, for the, uh, for the bullet, there is an initial velocity in the y direction. So for the bullet, we have this. Whereas for the monkey, there's no initial y motion. So the monkey just gets minus, coming down here, the monkey just gets this uh, expression right here, the 1 half at squared. Okay? You can see I've got a 1 half at squared here, minus a 1 half at squared over here. We can just get rid of those. So now our, our question becomes much simpler. Is h equal to the initial y velocity of the bullet times t? that becomes a little bit harder to figure out. What we need then is an expression for the time that the bullet is in the air. Let's come back to this a little bit later. Let's now examine the time that the bullet is in the air. I can use this equation to analyze time. When I do so, I know that the x component of velocity is just v naught cosine of theta, so I'll replace that here. It's 
And now let's solve that for time. Remember from above that theta is actually the inverse tangent of h over delta x. So I can replace that to get expression for t, let's go back and plug that in for our t right here. Does this work out? So is h equal to this? Well, we have v naught y, the initial velocity in the y direction, which we know is just initial velocity times sine of theta. But theta, once again, is inverse tangent of h over delta x. So let's write that. Here's my initial velocity in the y direction. Now I need time. I figured time out. Here it is right here. Things are getting a little crowded. I'm going to take this and uh, copy it and paste it a little bit further down. easier to see if we uh, if I would have written it on top of one another but what you can see I won't waste your time to write that what you can see is that, that we have a sine of inverse tangent of h over delta x divided by cosine of inverse tangent of h over delta x sine over cosine tangent you can also see that we have a v naught on top and a v naught on the bottom that will conveniently go away so we're left with the question is h equal to, remember sine over cosine, tangent of inverse tangent of h over delta x. And I also have this delta x over here left. Tangent of inverse tangent. If you don't remember this from your uh, pre-calc class, go back and review a little bit. Tangent of inverse tangent, that just leaves you with what's inside the operator here. That just leaves you with h over delta x. And of course, we still have our delta x right here. h is equal to h. The monkey will always get hit. 